In this video, I'm demonstrating how I make a Boolean style handwoven fringe that I use for the ends of some of my stoves. At the moment, what you see me doing is using my spinning wheel to make a really high twist bundle of threads that go with the embroidery on the stove and the fabrics that I've used to make the stove. So as I'm working, I'm taking several fine threads and plying them together with a really high twist. Every so often I've got to hook them onto another hook on the flyer so that it moves on to the next stage of the bobbin. I've now set up my inkle loom that I'm going to use to do the weaving. I've done this by wrapping threads round in a particular sequence. And this is a, an easy kind of loom to use because you just use your fingers to lift alternate threads either up or down to create a shed through which you can pass the shuttle. I'm now taking my high twist yarn and starting to incorporate this into the header tape that will become the fringe. I'm just working with it still on the bobbin of the spinning wheel. I'm just getting this thread anchored. I have to pull hard against the, the leading edge of the weaving so that I get even tension. I'm using the shuttle there, the edge of the shuttle, to press the threads close together. The shuttle's wound with a fine thread that will keep the integrity of the header tape, not let any of the threads separate out. So I've woven a small section of tape that has no tassels on it so that that keeps it firm at the edge of the stool without adding any extra bulk. The header tape can be hidden in the seam. I'm now going to get a credit card mm -hmm. which I use when I'm weaving these fringes. You've got a choice of whether you want tassels that are the width of the credit card or the length of the credit card. In this case I'm going with the width because I don't want particularly long tassels. The twist in the thread means that it tends to twist up on itself so as I'm weaving to make sure that all the tassel ends of the fringe are the same length I wrap them around the card and it saves them from twisting up on themselves until I'm ready for them to do so. So every time I pass a thread through of the high twist thread, I wrap it round the credit card. And then I anchor everything in place with another of the, the threads that are on the shuttle. You'll see me pushing really hard with the shuttle there against the leading edge. It's important to do that so that you always have a tight, a tightly woven piece of fringe. You see me wrapping the thread there around the credit card, then pulling the anchor thread through and then passing it back the other way. The twisted thread is just going through and back again through the same shed. That's the separation of the two layers of thread. The 
so long as I pull it back firmly I know that I've got all my tassels exactly the same length. Here what I'm doing is I've slackened off the tension on the loom so that I can pull this continuous band of threads round so that I've got more space for weaving and then I push the paddle back and tighten up the, the screw to keep it tight so that I've got a consistent tension all the way through when I'm weaving. Now I've got to the point where there's too many threads on the credit card so I'm beginning to pull them off from the back, ones that I know are now not going to move any further. And as I slide them off the credit card they twist up on themselves because of the high twist that I put on using the spinning wheel. Now I'm just doing a little count because I need to know that I'm doing the right number of threads, the right number of tassels for the width of the stole that I've already made that's going to be, this is going to be on.
the shuttle that I'm using as the anchor thread has a blunt side and a sharp side and it's really important to use the sharp side to beat against the parts that I've already woven. So as I press there, because it's a sharp edge, it tucks the thread right in. Now I'm at the stage where I've got to count the number of tassels again. I've already woven the first side of the fringe for one end of the stole and now I'm counting to make sure that I've got an identical number of tassels for the second piece of fringe. You might notice that there's actually three blocks of tasseled fringe on this. That's because I always weave a sample piece as well as the two ends of the front stool. And now I've woven all that I need to weave. And if you look at where the thread's coming out, you'll actually see that I've woven a little bit beyond where the tassels are, so that I've got a blank piece of header tape that can be sewn into the seam of the stool. Sometimes it can be tricky to keep the tassels separate. If two come off at the same time, they tend to twist up on each other. I'm just going to do a final pass of the anchor thread. And then I'm all done. I slacken off the tension. Take a pair of scissors and cut the thread. It's important to slacken the tension before you do that, otherwise the weaving has a tendency to unravel on itself as you cut. And that's the finished pieces of fringe. And the good thing about this style of fringe, with its twisted ends, is that there's no cut ends that will fray and look untidy over time. And that's now ready to go on the stool. This is the finished stole, Tree of Life design. It also incorporates the St. Augustine cross and the rose. And as we come in closer, you can see that I've superimposed this handwoven fringe on top of the frayed off edges of the tartan 